Jack, g'day. I'm Glenn Jackovich. Wait, no, I'm not. You I'm absolutely not a, are not. I'm not a big, bustling half backman. Play for the West Coast Eagles for a million to years. I'm actually James Clements, and I'm the host of the AFL Today Show, your new favourite one-stop shop for all things footy. Chockers show today. It's the Midweek Madness Show. So joining me are local weirdos, full-blown footy nuffs. Some would call them AFL experts. Some of them would be wrong. Uh, we do have Alex over there. What's going on, Alex? Oh, I'm excited. I will go full enough today. He goes full enough in a hilarious manner where it's just like, oh, my God. Sydney. He <laughs> just absolutely swans out. And now we've got the stats boy here. What's going on, Liam McGullion? Uh, that's a weird way to say my name, but is I'm it, very excited. Or is it not? <laughs> I, I liked it. Uh, I'm happy that Alex is up and about today. We've got some lot of Sydney chat, so he's very happy. It's like the only way to keep him engaged is just to talk about Sydney. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, he's just like that's off with the That's the same as you and Carlton, to be fair. No, I'm I'm always engaged to that. He's day. Essendon's <laughs> number one fan. That's exactly. true, and Essendon. And, and Essendon. Collingwood. <laughs> Me and Kevin. And West Coast. <laughs> West Coast. I'm all, I'm everyone's Except favorite. for Port Adelaide. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we are also bringing on a very special guest today. We are joined by Code Sports' Lockie McCurdy to yeah. chat all things Sydney footy, Swans and GWS. Yeah. And a bunch of other stuff. It's a good chat. Uh, so subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow AFL Today on all the socials. What is it? Sports Today Show on the old facey as well. Yep. And get around this, of course, where you get all your podcasts. Because remember... 40 years back. Not after round 13. If you're looking for Ugh. Thursday night footy, though, jeez. Oh, Sad times. I want to fire up about this in a second, but we'll get to it. Okay. Right? We'll we'll get to it. Yeah, I think, I think we're all angry. Every, I don't know anyone who's not angry. No one. No, no, we're we're already it. yelling about it. Right? <laughs> we're Moving on. It. <laughs> New sticker. It's okay. Wednesday. It's a midweek madness show. What is happening right now? We have the Sir, Sir Doug Nichols round across yep. uh, 10 and 11 uh, which is cool. We've got a lot of awesome designed Indigenous jerseys out there as well, uh, which is always cool. The best part, I think, is usually the stories around them as well, yes. where it's like 360 and other places like that. We'll have like these big exposés on it. And the Melbourne like, Demons one last night was phenomenal. It's mm. very cool. It's also awesome. It's just like a really awesome touch by the AFL who managed to get so many Many things completely wrong. <laughs> uh, this is really good. Like the fixture, but this is very fun. <laughs> this is a thumbs up. Uh, other news. We are, we'll actually look at some of these Indigenous jerseys, of course, as well. Yeah. Some can we do a clip? Gear. Yeah, why not? Uh, Love right. the D's, uh, the light blue. Yes. Oh. Uh, sleeve. Oh, yeah. But the other news, you might have heard, we finally know what's happening between rounds 16 to 23. And it's a bit boring. Uh, <laughs> let's let's wait to yell again. Wait till we get to the winner and loser of the week to yell about that. The fixture's out. It hmm. sucks. Anyway, uh, Jacob Wiedering. <laughs> Could be very, very rich if you're listening to reports. One and a half mil. What the hell? I love this. This is St Kilda being on tilt more than any other club or ever. Or is it Steve Silvani going, oh, I love you, I Wittes. love Carlton yeah. guys. Love you, yeah. Remember how I drafted you, man? I love you, man. Is this Steven Silvani That's- like getting every GWS guy to Carlton? Now he's going to get every Carlton no, guy to St Kilda. Maybe. Yeah. maybe. I love it. He's That's- like, damn, I can't believe we missed out on Zach Fisher. <laughs> that seems overs. I know he's the probably the No, no, no the it seems. Best, it absolutely is overs. He gets overs. injured a lot, for starters. Is it? And it's like, what I looked up the salary cap. 7.2 mil is the salary cap. It's That's a big up. chunk of we've your got, yearly we've, salary cap. We've got new player payments coming in from like next year, I think. Yeah, yeah. Still, still, that's, still, that's way too much. 1.5 mil. It's way too much. For a centre half back who gets injured a lot, it's not Sam Taylor. I agree that he's probably in the top two like defenders. I'd take him every day of the week. Who would you... Uh, throw, Wittering and Sam Taylor, I think. I think Harris I'd pay him oh. double. Harris Andrews is right there as I well. Think I'd, I'd take Harris Wieders. Andrews is I'd 27. Wieders. Wieders, bang. Harris Andrews doesn't look I'd like take him. Sam Taylor. Where does a leader? Where does his a weapon? He's not worth that much. Though. Pay him as much as he needs to stay. Well, Carl, you, that means you, you'll go from. I will don't have the money. Yeah. I will personally stand out the front of Princess Park <laughs> just with my wallet and just go. Here's where is five bucks. Where is and just like start throwing money at him. Just go, go on, stay. And he's like, Jim, quit it, would you? I'm like, never. You've been, you've been here every day, Jim. It's, right. it's like I will do this every day until you re-sign, mate. <laughs> Me and Cripps just hanging out, best buds. Is that a live stream? Uh, Jim just, uh, just Jim on just live until, uh, until we're just camp out in Bridges Park. <laughs> yeah. Pretty big park. You know, I take the squids there <laughs> nice pop, a lot yeah. of the weekends. Yeah. Uh, but Weeders, look, 1.5 mil from the Saints. That's it too is, much money. It is sauce just going, oh, I love you, Weeders. <laughs> oh, I love you, man. Come <laughs> play for me again. It's St. Kilda being like, oh, we need a good player. Yep. Uh, Gold Coast doing redesign, rebrand. I reckon they should put me in charge. Uh, simple as that. I'll fix the Suns. What will their kit look like with a you in sun. charge? A sun. We'll need to have some sort of sun <laughs> no, there. Yeah. Just rip off the Phoenix like, Sun. Like the Phoenix like, Sun. That's Phoenix what I was Sun. Say. We're on purple. We're going the orange. Phoenix Sun be is rad. a beautiful logo. Yeah. <laughs> Look, seriously, we, the Suns have. We've already got a purple team. Whatever. They're, they're, <laughs> they stink. We're going to go purple and orange, and it's going to be awesome because purple? the Phoenix Ooh. Suns have completely cooked their entire redesign brand as well. Yes. They never quite seem to nail it. 
And it's like you had the most yeah. classic, awesome jerseys, and they every so often hit yeah, it on the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they completely cook it. Okay. The Phoenix Suns just do it. Gold Coast. I'll come on six figures a, a year black, black as a consultant. Logo. It'll yeah. be pretty easy. Mm. Away we go. Suns, I can fix it. Dimmer, give us a call. <laughs> All right, Collingwood fan. Uh, as I said on the Sunday night show, look, if there's fans out there you don't want touching players, it's probably Collingwood fans. <laughs> you don't know where any of them have been. You don't know what they've been up to. <laughs> and he's been banned for 12 months. Suspended for six. Suspended, yeah, suspended sentence I, I for six. I think he's lucky to be, have that. It's just basically just... done for the year, right? Yeah. That's sure. We're going to talk about this again in the NRs. But again, don't touch the players. Yep. Any other news? Uh, uh, apparently, Lewis Melican has hit a games trigger to get an extra year at the Swans. Oh, geez. That's broken uh, the back. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's, but it's news. It's, it no, I'm talking about the Swans, man. <laughs> no, but, Too no, much Swans I'm, now. I've literally saw that five minutes ago, but it is news. Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> right. Midweek loser and winner of the week. How about just the fans? Uh, because we have a new fixture. Yeah, from what's round going on? 16 through 23. Interestingly enough, you know how many rounds there are between 16 to 23, Stats Boy? A fair few, yeah. Do the <laughs> he, he, he doesn't he do the math. <laughs> he doesn't. He's like, he's Seven. A, I'm no math magician. <laughs> I know how many there are. 16, 17, 18, yes. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. It's eight. Oh, eight. Far out. <laughs> and plus, oh. we've still got the floating round 24 fixture. He's the Stats Boy. Like, what are we doing? Here? I, didn't, I didn't give myself That's that. That's it. So you have the floating fixture <laughs> in 24 as well. You know how many weeks that is? Nine. You know what you can do each week? The, Play Thursday night footy with so every dumb. team in the AFL. I don't think I've ever met one person that said Thursday night footy no. isn't a good I'll idea. I'll tell you who I saw who? complaining about who? it on Twitter yesterday. Who? Our favourite man, Matty S123. Oh, the worst. Guy. If he says something's wrong, do the opposite because no, he's wrong. He's like, yeah, a very, very small. Yeah, man. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can we do this? The AFL not doing Thursday night footy is absolute bush league Ooh, gear. I say something else. It's a kick in the face for the fans saying, oh, no, 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 we know what you want. And the fans are like, can we have Thursday night footy? They're like, no, yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. You can have overlapping games on a Sunday and, a and that is all. And you're like, and a Saturday uh, as well, why not? And also, why not Fridays? We've still We're got not, another double head of Friday night too. That it's ridiculous. disgusting. Ugh. The AFL here is making its own case against its own expansion because what they're trying to say, in very hackneyed terms as well, is we don't have enough good games to put on a Thursday. That's not true. Exactly, Stats But course. you also don't need to have good games every Thursday. Now, this is put it on game. and we will watch. Exactly. This is the exact point I'm going to make. Exactly here. right. Because what you're trying to sell is not the two teams playing on the Thursday no. night. You're trying to sell Thursday night football. People do nothing constant. on a Thursday. Well, you might because you're boring. But <laughs> well, I actually were. Actually cool work. people keep cool people do stuff on Thursdays. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah right. You know, I don't do anything on Thursdays. <laughs> I'm not cool anymore. <laughs> that got Leo in the background. <laughs> but it is a very simple idea and a very simple premise. To build it properly, you back to the hilt, no matter who is playing. So, right? because yeah. with this simple idea of saying we don't have enough good games is absolutely beyond the pale of stupidity because you're like, right, what it's saying is to the fans of those other teams who are outside your the teams eight, suck. your teams don't matter. It means that your team yep. stinks. We do not care about you or <laughs> your fans because, oh, it's Thursday night footy. I wonder if my team's playing. Oh. No. And now we don't even have Thursday night footy because the AFL is too cowardly to try to build it. Did you so also my point, hear- my point about this as well, right? We should have every single AFL employee who's been to the United States in the last 20 years <laughs> pay back every part and every cent of yes. those junkets yeah. because they've We're clearly, going yeah. they have not learnt a single goddamn thing in any of those junkets. If you yeah. go any from the AFL, you go, oh, we're going on a fact-finding mission. There'll be hundreds. You didn't find any <laughs> facts, did you? The facts are if you build it, they will come. Yeah. This is what it's all about. It's kicking dirt in the face of teams like the loyal fans of St Kilda, of Brisbane, Hawthorne. North Melbourne. Your beloved yes. North Melbourne. Because what <laughs> is the AFL, if not basically built around the clubs and the fans who go out and support it week in, week yeah. out. To say, we know better than you, is a slap in their face. Not every game has to be a blockbuster. No. It builds up the health of the league by simply showcasing every the team. entire yep. range of what you have. Even your mediocre teams, it doesn't matter. It's engaging those fans when their season might be cooked. It gives them hope. It goes, oh, we still care about The NFL does this so well. Do they rotate, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like their Thursday night games... 
Rotate. They understand, right? Mm-hmm. They go, we know that our some of our teams are going to be playing on a short week. It sucks, but we're going to cop it because the product is the product. The product is Thursday night football. Away we go. And the paternalistic approach of the AFL to be like, no, 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 no. You guys don't want Thursday night football. Right. Well, hold on, hold on. Ratings, the ratings are ratings are overwhelmingly, yeah. way, 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 overwhelmingly way, way, saying mm. we do. Yep. It's beyond the pale. It is stupid. And I can't believe that the AFL has been this, this short-sighted to go, oh, we'll keep testing it, and then we'll test it a bit more next year. Oh, during winter, we want to give families so, and stuff. You know what's really easy? Go on Indoor the games. There's a roof for a reason at Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you coming around oh, to the roof? Oh, oh, oh. I want ball with the roof. What did he do with Because it's a night game. <laughs> but sorry, They're that- turning into a roof fanatic. <laughs> what but, are we doing here? But did you hear one of the guys' reason? He's like, oh, you know, so in winter it gets a bit cold on Thursday. So it's not cold on Friday no, and Saturday. No, no. Friday night Friday. football's still there. Oh, no, the good thing is the sun's still out during the night and on Friday night. And it doesn't rain on, week- on Fridays. Like, <laughs> Saturday nights. Oh, it's never been cold on a Saturday night. Did you know that, man? People still go to the footy. <laughs> it is absolutely ridiculous yeah. to abs- like. I can't believe that the way that they've built this up and to completely fumble the bag, while the NRL, the NRL, the NRL, they're gonna have one thing over us finally. But yeah, the NRL, one of the leagues with, to put it nicely, not the smartest people no. like in the world in charge. But they did now Thursday night footy. Still got Thursday you know night footy coming up. Thursday they nights. roll it out every single week, mm-hmm. all through the season. It whips. And, like, I love that Gerald Waitley is just, like, ropeable. Yeah, this Robo is great. Robbo is putting together coherent arguments about <laughs> why they're completely wrong. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> AFL, you've cooked it. But it's also, like, you look at some of these overlap and double-up games later in the year. In round 21 on a Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. at the MCG, which is two short kicks away, August the 3rd, <laughs> Carlton and Collingwood will be doing battle. in a. There'll be 90,000 people there. So that could be, you know, what, second versus third, second versus fourth, whatever. First versus second. Okay. (laughs) In Adelaide at the exact same time, Port Adelaide, who will still be in the top four but about to slide, will be taking on potentially top of the ladder Sydney Swans. Yeah, that's a joke. What are we doing cannibalizing our own products, putting two of the biggest games we have for the rest of the year on at the exact same time? But, Alex, you see, it's uh, it's about getting people into the games and also getting as many eyeballs watching. That doesn't make doesn't any make sense any, at all. What are you all doing? We were doing go, the exact wrong. And the overlapping thing is like obviously been a big oh. bugbear of the AFL Today Show. We're now edging on ten minutes. Of just I was going to say we probably should go. No. But <laughs> last point: overlapping is the exact opposite of what you should be doing if you're trying to maximise your broadcast. Mm, right? Yeah. You should be going into the next game, into the next game, into the next game. Should be. I, I have an idea. It's very simple. I, you have Thursday night footy. You have Friday night footy. You got three games Saturday, three games Sunday. Bang bang Isn't bang. That's one game overlap. Monday. It's not hard. Common sense. Let's go Monday night footy. Yeah. Boom. So Thursday, 7.20, Friday, 7.20, 1.10, 4.30, 7.30 on Saturday. Sunday, 12.40, 3.20 for the traditional 3.20 slot. 6.45 Sunday, Monday, 7.10. Off we go. No overlap. Boom. This Build it why. and they will come. It's not, it's not rocket surgery. No, Monday shut up, Stats Guy. Monday night football works. <laughs> Monday, Monday, I don't have to agree with you. I don't agree We're going to put the ruse on every Monday when oh, I'm in charge. That would make me sick. When I'm in charge, you're first against the wall <laughs> Monday night. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, but Monday night. No. Anyway, I love it. Let's go. Fix it, AFL. Fix it. Let's do some ENRs just to really, Jeez, <laughs> really, we... really to boost this again. <laughs> uh, let's fly through some of these. There's no footy. Absolutely should be every week. Yeah, yeah. nah. Yes. Yeah. Did the AFL get the fixture wrong? Yeah, nah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Was it weird that they rolled that guy out who didn't know how to speak? Yeah, nah. Yes. yes. Uh, Port, Sydney, Carlton, calling at the same time around 21. Can we just fire this dude and, like, get him gone Can we just, just restructure of, it? Can we just play one of those games on the Thursday night? It'll be fine. It'll be a sellout regardless. Let's go any day of the week and that's a sellout. No, but it just don't overlap. Have Port and Sydney or Carlton Collingwood on the Thursday. Done. Yep. Done. I love it. Yeah, nah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. If Chris Fagan was coaching a Melbourne team, any of the Melbourne teams, would it be under way more pressure? Yeah, nah. Nah. Yeah. Oh, nah, yeah. I'm saying nah. He still got some credits in the bank from last year from making the grand final. They've had the injury season from hell already. He has credits in the bank for one blowout year. No, you're wrong because the key word there is more, more pressure. He's not under enough pressure at the moment. No, no, I, no I don't. Yeah, I don't more think more pressure. Be, I think he'd yeah. be under more pressure than he is right now. I don't I think agree, he should yeah. be under any pressure at all, though. I think Ross Lyon should be under pressure. Bevo yes. should be under pressure. Chris Fagan should be under pressure. Yeah. And Fagan's probably skating on along. No problem. Ken think, Hinkley's fine. He just won a showdown. Yeah, if you're a Brisbane no, team... No, they lost the showdown. They won the other one. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a Brisbane team, Sydney team, and you're a coach, you don't get as much pressure. 
just like for the fact that Buddy went to Sydney for less pressure. There's there's just a thing of going out of less Victoria. Pressure. If you're a Victorian team, you're going to get more pressure. Fagan, I still think he's a great coach and injuries and stuff, but he should have a little yeah. bit more pressure. Great no, is a big word. Great is. I think he's a great coach. He's, he's a good acceptable. Coach. I don't think it's his fault that they haven't had that much success. Right, the Hawks can be in the finals as early as next year. Was this written last year? Yeah, nah. 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 nah but they could be like top 10, 11. Jeez. But not, not don't finals. Don't knock yourself out with that optimism, yeah. Stats boy. No, I, just, <laughs> I think they're going they're tracking, they're tracking along pretty nicely. They're, they are. they're, they're going well better. without a lot of their best players. I'm so. saying nah. I still think it's, yeah. Yeah, I've got to say nah, though. I'm yeah. going to throw this one to Leo off camera. How many of your best 22 are they missing right now, Leo? Quick, off the top of your head, just let her loose. Four to five. Four, Four to five. five. Yeah, yeah, so still enough. How many Carlton missing out of their top 22? Yeah, but that's different. Carlton have a very good team. <laughs> so Carlton also have depth. <laughs> yeah, a little, bit, a little bit. Uh, the Hawks thing is fascinating, right? Because I think we talked about this preseason. There are more good teams in the AFL than ever before. Yeah. It's a creamy middle. Love a good creamy middle. So the point being, I think it's going to be really hard for the Hawks to crack that top eight next year. Like we talked about it this year. Oh, they're holding me up. And it's then really injuries. hard. Injuries it's really percent. hard. You're looking at Brisbane this year, just got all this talent on the, in the world. And it's the most competitive probably see, couple of seasons we've had in a long time. So uh, Wasn't exactly. there something about Joe Danaher, like, you know, halving his contract? Uh, oh, yeah. I think, yeah, I think so our I'm, boss was trying to throw yeah. out a year now for that one. But yeah. Just, it, it yeah, got cut. Yeah. It was Alex, cut. not yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut. All right. Uh, was the 12 months for the Pies fan too heavy a suspension for touching a West Coast player? Yeah, nah. Oh, I'm so torn. No, I'm, it wasn't. Nah, I'm going to say nah. It was right. 12 months is fine. Just if don't you're touch sitting the in place. the front row, you've paid your ticket. Well done. You've got the best seat in the house. Or whatever. If you think that's the best seat in the house, just don't touch the place. It's pretty easy. That's but, like every sport. NBA. But then I saw on social media people going, oh, but then what about the James Heard thing and this and that? It's like James Heard ran he up to the him. dude and hugged, hugged him. him yeah. That's James Heard hugging him. That's yeah. not me going. My, yeah, exactly. One this of my long time, <laughs> long-term fixes for this is one of my NBA takes. Every player should get to fight at least one fan <laughs> per year. <laughs> like, you know what AFL fans that would be are not so going to do? Or like, seriously, it goes for social media. Every AFL player gets to fight one, one fan, fan like each it. year. You can have that in your back pocket, round 23. You're copying it on social media. It's like, you. You. Oh, no. You. Out of the crowd, doesn't it matter. Stop they stop the game. social media. We stop the game. Yeah. We stop the social media commentary. It's simple as this. I think I just fixed Twitter the would, AFL. Twitter would have to Twitter would just be like, it wouldn't be a thing. We're cool. We're cool. No, We're cool. Twitter wouldn't but be a thing. Flip side. So say you're ragging on Max Gorn and he punches the lights out of some bloke in round three. It's then he's used his one fight. It is <laughs> open all slammer. open season on Max Gorn. Gorn's just there. like yelling at you in the goal screen. You, you won't touch him. Go on. You won't do it. Seriously, you want to get rid of any sort of social media vilification <laughs> to be honest to racial good. vilification if Adam uh, Goods could have gone right I to to <laughs> you me and the dude would have just go oh I'm really sorry <laughs> I don't want to do this like no 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 I would like it it I is like part of your contract walking into this stadium that I can beat I reckon the you have to wear a red arm Michael O'Loughlin belting that West Coast fan <laughs> in 2005 in the final yeah yeah, yeah. prove me wrong you can't. <laughs> no, I can't. This is I the can't. best idea. That, Feels that, illegal. That could be the best idea you've had on the show, Jim. That's the first I've one. I've had a lot of very first good one. ideas. Yeah. This is a very good one. <laughs> Every AFL player can fight. Oh, Wait, does, so does that mean Bevo gets to fight someone? I think we can give coaches one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tell you who you don't want to fight, Adam Kingsley. Oh, my God. He's got he's got pipes. Pipes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Last one. Is the AFL looking to bring another team into t after Tassie into the competition? Should two clubs fold to keep it at 18? No. Oh, my God. Yes. No. Ooh. Yes. I'm also saying that probably because I'm a North fan. but Because so North Melbourne would be one like of the clubs to fall. Expansions are, it is, it is a much bigger conversation because, I look, I've talked this up time and time and time again. I think there's more talent in the AFL than there ever has been. Mm. At the same time, it's more competitive than it's ever been. Yeah. yeah. So you have teams like North who's like, oh, we're just a little bit worse off than everybody, and they haven't won a game. Yeah. So it's going to be very hard when you add two teams and dilute It's going to be bad for a while, more. yeah. And uh, then it's also, yeah, adding, adding in all the draft concessions, new, new teams are going to get in. So the teams that are really bad then are going to continue to be bad for the coming years. So I am of the belief that we do have too many teams in Victoria. And there's been... A, no, but there's also... <laughs> the old man. Please delete two teams. <laughs> I am not a crank. Yeah. I feel like but, people that only say that if they have a big club or they're at an interstate club. Like, I would never say that. A Carlton fan would Mate, the Swans, the Sydney Swans literally went to Sydney because yeah, know, they were going to be fired no, into the sun if they didn't do so. Yeah. And also, I'm also saying that because the rumors are like Saints and North. Saints and yeah, North would like, be the two oh, I fire into the sun. Well, let's, let's not do that. I'd rather I don't think it'll ever happen. relocation before folding. But that means you'd still have 19 if you relocate a team. Yeah, 20. 
we, we, we get twenty in Northern Territory, and, maybe and Northern Territory, and yeah. away we go. We're another team in Perth. Move another team to Perth. Boom. No, no that's move a team to New Zealand. That'd be fun. The Kalgoorlie oh, Kangaroos. Oh, Brew, what's going on here? Eh? There is AFL New Zealand. Game? That's pretty what's big. This game over here. Eh? All right, there you go. That's some good yet ours. Just latching onto my fighting idea. Simple as that. Right. Now let's throw it to a very very fun chat with our very own friend of the program, Lockie McCurdy. All right, now we welcome on a very special guest. You might read his gear across the Daily Telly, code sports.com.au. He is a lone voice in the deserted wasteland of the AFL in Sydney. Uh, it is Code Sports' very own, Lockie McCurdy. What's going on, Lockie? What's going up in Sydney? Yeah, good afternoon, guys. Good to have uh, two teams absolutely flying up here at the moment, which is pretty nice. Yeah. Swans, Giants, uh, can't ask for too much more than that. That's it. I mean, this is why we got you on, because apparently Alex just... Just keeps whinging, <laughs> sucking nonstop about how no one is talking about the Swans. Yeah. Meanwhile, all we do is talk about the Swans now. When apparently. he's on, yeah, yeah. We're basically a Swans podcast at this point, which yeah. is fine. I'm okay a with it. A lot that. of Swans fans have now subscribed and are listening. It's great. Yes, it's great. I yeah. love Errol Goulden. That's fantastic. Yeah. The rest of the team, there's, I don't know. But <laughs> at the same time, uh, what is the vibe up there around the Swans? They're top of the ladder, Lockie. What, what are we doing here? Well, it's just really exciting. I think you can go back through the record books and really the Swans have never had a, as good a start to life or a season than they've been currently doing up in Sydney. They're 9-1, and one, incredible, um, going just so strong at the moment. And the fact is the fans are responding. You've got crowd numbers going through the roof. They're currently on track to have their, their highest ever attendance uh, uh, for a season. They had 40,000 on a, on a wet, rainy Saturday afternoon at 1.45 against the Giants, which is unheard of. So it, it's the fact that on the field they're doing all the right things with a young team who's going to stick together for a while, but the fans are also responding to it, which is uh, fantastic to see. My big thing about, like, Alex is whinging and whinging and whinging. <laughs> he just does a lot of whinging. So, yeah. like, at the moment now it's like water for ducks back. But the point being, why do you think, folks, Alex, this is as much for you as it is for Lockie. Yeah. Why do you think folks aren't frothing them? Like they have no buddy anymore. We get that. Is there like a lack of sexiness around the Swans that like Victorian media just doesn't care? Like, what do you think? It's for me. It's I don't think that the Victorian media cares as much. But it's like, oh, Essendon are winning games. This is amazing. <laughs> They've never done this. They look good. And then it's like, oh yeah, the Swans are still good. Like they are every year. It's sort of like they, the media is expecting the Swans That's to be there. Say, yeah. Yeah. But to me, and I don't know how you feel, Lockie, it is I feel like the media is actually underrating how good their start's been. Yes, there was the blip against Richmond, but they have been putting teams to the sword every week. Mm. I think certainly there's a level of that, that because of what happened in the 2022 grand final, that sort of aura probably sticks around them a little bit for people who don't watch them each and every week, like I'm sure you and I do, Alex. So the the fact that you've got a, a young midfield core who is probably the best midfield in the competition at the moment with Errol Gould and Chad Warner and obviously Isaac Heaney at the moment who are absolutely flying to start the season. And the fact is they've added perfectly. They've added Brody Grundy in who is dominating games when he's playing at the SCG. James Jordan's been excelling in that sort of hybrid, whether it's on the wing, tagging, whatever it might be. And then down both ends, you've got a, a defence that looks really solid, even without Tom McCartan last weekend. And you've got a forward line who are finding different ways to score, which is the key. Obviously, as you said, no buddy. But when you've got Logan McDonald, you've got Will Hayward, both 15-plus goals for the year. You've got um, Joel Amati, you've got Hayden McLean chipping up, and then you've got Chad Warner and Isaac Heaney's goals as well. So they kind of tick all the boxes We're at the moment. Yeah, We're yeah. really I good. That, that's the weirdest part. Like, Amati party, sexy and fun. Chad Chundley Warner, yeah. sexy got and the fun. TN boots on yeah. and everything. This yeah. is awesome. I just don't. This Brody is, Grundy's sexy to someone too. Can't I mean, forget that. He's, he's People like a bear. Yeah. He's, definitely got a, he's definitely got a man bun. Yeah. Uh, either way, I do love the idea of future blue Will Hayward, though. Uh, I enjoy him. He's <laughs> future Adelaide Crow. His, his work is fantastic. Uh, but James Jordan is someone you wanted to talk about, Stats Boy. Yeah, I saw you wrote a uh, an article, Lockie. Uh, just, is he one of the most underrated signings of the season? Uh, although my, his stats might jump off the pa not, not jump off the page, might not be as sexy as uh, what these guys are trying to say about some other players, but he's just done a really good tagging role, been really good. Would you say he's one of the most underrated signings of the season? Oh, absolutely. I think when you consider that the Swans were able to 
get him for nothing. And that's the, the fact they didn't have to give up picks. They didn't have to do any of that stuff. Uh, they could just get him as a free agent, essentially. And he's gone about his work beautifully. He was really impressive throughout preseason. There are a lot of people who obviously with Brody, with Taylor, when they were flying sort of December, January, February, it was still James Jordan who was kind of everyone was going, that's the guy to watch out for this year. He is fitting so well. And yeah, it's the fact that maybe the first couple of weeks, it wasn't the sort of high output performance that Swans fans wanted that immediate, I guess, sugar rush of going, okay, he's getting 20, 25-plus yeah. disposals a game. But the fact is, in the last three weeks, he, he's just shut down three of the – or the last four weeks, three of the best ball users. You've obviously got Noah Anderson, got Lockie Whitfield of the Giants, who he did a fantastic job of in the derby, and then Jordan Clark last weekend. The, the Frio just were struggling to get that run off half back, and that's what Jordan Clark does so well, and it's what James Jordan was able to kind of really limit. Yeah, Sucked right. in Sam Walsh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah <pretty laughs> so I'm like I'm – like, I've got a – big call coming up later in this episode that is just literally built around this so yeah. it is uh, yeah, yeah. alex yeah oh so obviously will hayward just mentioned him he's out of contract and he's possibly more potent than out of contract jake stringer uh <laughs> he's got huge money on the table from adelaide allegedly and carlton but also logan mcdonald's another one out of contract it seems like the chat that he might leave has died down are we is it almost a case of expect logan to resign and unfortunately given will hayward's got an extra what three hundred thousand a year on the table he's the one that gets squeezed out i think it was always that the, the big five i guess if you want to call them that that had to resign this year they've had three obviously put pen to paper ready in row bottom golden and, and more recently florent there was kind of an expectation that one was probably always going to be unlucky to miss out because they were all playing so well they were all going to need much higher deals to kind of stay in Sydney. And now it's down to Will and Logan. We kind of heard from, um, I think, Freo list manager on, on code last week, kind of saying, yeah, our interest has died down because we've got, got Tracy, we've got Jai Miss, we've got a few players really kind of playing well on the forward line. So I, I don't think, make don't make don't end my mistake because Will Haywood, I think, wants to stay in Sydney because he's so settled here. He's got um, business partnerships with Ollie Florin and their, their drinks company. He, he's grown up here for the last seven, eight years, however long it is. But the fact is that when there's that much more money on the table, you can't blame a, a guy um, who has got a five, six year contract where he's going to be earning 200K more a year um, yeah, you know, on the table business? in front of him money. for considering Making it. more money. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, I, from just down the road, that's awesome. If, like, if he hadn't signed by the end of the year and all things going well, the Swans happened to win the flag and he leaves, it's like, you got your flag, now you're getting a crap ton of money. Yeah, if, fair. Yeah. If you win okay. a flag, I think you'd yeah. definitely, definitely well, be out of it's, there. It's the Brad Hill. He got his flags early and now he's a money chaser. Nice. And all, all for it. Uh, and you've got the Luke Parker, Callum Mills question there, Alex. Yeah, so obviously they're probably two of the Swans' better players. I'd say Callum Mills is probably top five and most important to the squad. The important thing is with the team, they're currently flying, and Luke Parker had 70 touches in two weeks in the VFL. If and when those two do come back into the squad, who goes out? Because you feel like Callum Mills is a player, he's just straight in. There's no questions about that. But of the 23 at the moment, who comes out? I've got my theories, it's tough, but isn't I'd it? like yeah, to yeah. see who you think. Yeah, it's tough. I, I think that's the problem with Luke Parker at the moment, that there's no obvious choice. But if you were choosing someone in that midfield, it's probably Taylor Adams, if you're being brutally honest in terms of the start to the season. But it's not because Taylor's playing badly in this team. It's just because everyone else is at such a higher level that when you look at the numbers, he's probably a little bit low. But I think Taylor also brings something a bit different to the team um, that maybe Luke Parker can't bring. So it's going to be really interesting when they make that call on Parker. Like, it could be this weekend. We're not sure yet. So I think they just... He will get back into this team eventually. I think the unfortunate thing is he's on that cusp of being able to play 300 games this year if he plays every game from here on in. But if he misses one or two more games, he'll have to wait another year for game 300. And injuries always happen as well. So there's, you know, I'd say that yeah. at some stage someone in this midfield will get injured. going to have to change or something. But yeah. my Should, I think the Swans actually with Callum Mills, they just need to instigate a too many gingers rule. <laughs> So I think we've already got two. You can't come in until we lose one other one. <laughs> I was that. surprised. So my, I think the unlucky man looking at the roles that the Swans have been playing this year, and I hate to say it because I love him, is Jake Lloyd. I feel like he's Ooh. the one that will miss out for a Callum Mills because you can't drop Sam Wicks out of the forward line. You can't do that for my super coach draft yeah. team. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> and come on. Robbie Fox's the impact off the sub does work. I feel like it's Jake Lloyd that does miss out for Callum Mills because you can't not pick Ooh, Callum Mills. Okay, stuff. okay. 
I uh, think, um, yeah, it could be someone like Lloyd. It could be someone else like Matty Roberts, who obviously has been playing really well um, this year off halfback, but maybe they go with a bit more stability as they make that run towards finals or, or whether they do go, um, sorry, Foxy, you're the unlucky guy out. He's already been subbed two weeks in a row. and he's already he, he got told at the start of the year he was playing forward and he's played the last few games sort of down back. So his role is constantly changing. But I, I think it's a much better position there in this year compared to last year when they were just basically going, if we've got 22 fit players, you're out in the park. And my boy Beef Sheldry can't get a game at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is killing me. Beef no way you can't no, fit in that no, no, team. It's very easy. <laughs> Where's the beef? <laughs> Where's the beef? They don't need him. Don't Come need on, Sheldrick. Yeah. Where's the beef? Let's go. <laughs> oh, man, I miss the beef. I love the beef. Uh, anyway, tough scenes. Uh, I do also like that we've brought Lockie McCurdy on just so Alex can geek out about the Swans for like He's very excited. He's minutes. been excited for this whole week. It's great. Yeah. It's like you're his Taylor Adams. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. <laughs> it all works. <laughs> I've got Taylor Adams. <laughs> it works. I've never been compared to Taylor Adams, Adams before. No, yeah. He's my eyes are keen. Let's, uh, let's be real. He, <laughs> man. Uh, but anyway, you're now actually, I I think, um, judging from what you're writing about now, you're actually just now a uh, GWS nuff. <laughs> mm. um, so the problem is they've also lost three of the last four. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit of a worry. And yeah. they've gone off the boil a little bit. What's gone wrong? The tsunami's gone. Mm. For now. Yeah, it, it is interesting. When you say the tsunami's gone, that, that has been what's missing in the past two weeks. You've got a, a team who's renowned for their, their gun and run, essentially, off half back, and, and it's just disappeared against both the Swans and, and then Essendon last weekend. Lockie Whitfield's been shut down, uh, first by James Jordan and now Matt Guelphy last weekend. A few other guys haven't been able to to find that those handballs and, and those uncontested possessions that are kind of so key to their game through the midfield. And it's, it's a big challenge this week against the Dogs to kind of turn it around, even though they're finally back at home in Sydney for the first time in two months, that now we've got Josh Kelly out for six weeks. You've got Lockie Ash, who's just as important to that back line, out for six weeks. So it, it's the sort of thing where these things start to add up. And while they're still in a good position at, at six and three compared to where they were this time last year, it, it is danger signs if there's one or two more losses in the next couple of weeks because suddenly they're, they're at the same point they were last year chasing the tail. Um, we know they're a good momentum side. We know they can come good at the back end of the year, but they'll want a few performances like this where they're down on troops, down on a bit of form, and they can turn things around. So that was my vibe, right? I'm yeah. like, are they just playing possum like they were last year? It's like, <laughs> oh, we'll get our injuries out of the road now. Then we'll just dominate. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. the back after the yeah. season will win every game. But that mm. was the same for them this time last year. They were just barely chugging along. They got that fluky, well, not fluky win against the Swans in the, in the derby, um, and then they just started to slowly, slowly rise. Is it just... They've banked some wins early, and you, what you get to fourteen wins, you'll make finals. I'm, they're I'm good sure, enough to do so. I'm sure they're not thinking like that, but it does feel like that it's very similar last year. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's weird. <laughs> I don't like <laughs> it. You look a bit rattled by them. Yeah. It's like literally as soon as I said they're the best team in the comp, they just went. I know. Ah, hey Jim, nah. <laughs> it's brutal. <laughs> yeah. um, Toby's off the boil. How are you yeah. feeling about Toby Green there, Lockie? It's been a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, Toby's definitely not playing in his best. He said as much um, earlier in the week. And I think it's it's almost that little bit of, okay, he, he was able to kind of ease into the year a little bit with their forward line, getting guys like Callum yeah, Brown, Jacob yeah. Hardy, Aaron Cadman. Yeah, oh. he just had a kid, right? Yeah, he did. He so um, had one basically yeah. this just is, before round one, I yeah. think. Yeah, it goes one of two ways, right? So this has been long, strength. long time. One of my big strength. things for NBA Australia is simply don't, do your business where it's going to end up you're having a kid in the playoffs because it completely cooks your game. <laughs> or it goes to Fred Van Vliet where he turns into like a six-foot-one Michael Jordan yes. out of absolutely nowhere and they win a title. So it's like one of the two things. Like Jason Tatum had a kid. Uh, he's actually, I think, got two. And, yeah, he does, yeah. And yeah. he just completely fell off the face of the planet yeah, for yeah. about a month and a half. And I feel like that might be the thing that we need you to dig into here, Lockie. <laughs> it's just, look – the article is right there. We're going to do some research. I'll get Alex and Stats Boy on it just right. back in the background. Who has been out there having kids? Patrick Cripps. Getting, no, Cripps, getting Cripps has gotten better. It's yeah. getting weird. Cripps, he got the dad strength. It's what it's all about. Whereas Toby, <laughs> I don't know. He's just completely, he's too tired. I'm, you know, I've got two kids. I'm saying I'm always tired. It sucks. And I'm not paid to play professional football or kick goals. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Still a chance, you know, it's all good. Uh, but at this point, like... He, he was asked a bit about it, yeah. He was asked a bit about it earlier this week and he said the sleep was a problem for the first month but it's fine now. But he there's, a, I think, a group of three or four new dads essentially in the last three months out of the Giants. So it's him, Steve Cornelio, Lockie Keefe and Nick Haynes. They're all um, new dads for the <laughs> is first that time over the last couple of months. Well, so... Yeah, so I the old like, Lee Matthews rule is like you're back in the day when <laughs> Brisbane were winning. He's like, 
Your wife is yeah. not allowed to be pregnant in between February and June. <laughs> Anytime after that, it's fine. Yeah, that's right. Don't miss September. So good. Can't miss September. Um, but yeah, the Toby thing is fascinating just because like he is a game breaker. We all know that. And uh, without him sort of firing, like it's incredible to see that forward line of Hogan, Riccardi, and Co. It does feel like if he was firing, like he just makes that forward line one of the best two in the comp. Well, they've won another two games. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's the sort of thing where you just, you, they always need at least probably two guys mm. to perform well on that forward line. I think the Giants, I think there's other forward lines at the comp where if you have one guy have a good day, like Will Hayward, for example, the last couple of weeks, that they can kind of jump off the back of that. Where the Giants, Hogan, you, you know, you're always going to get at least a goal or two from him, but you need some of those smalls, whether it's a Brent Daniels, whether it's Cal Brown once he returns, whether it's Riccardi, Cadman, they've got the guys there. They just need to make sure that consistently two or three of them are hitting the scoreboard. And that's sort of one thing that wasn't mentioned with this one, similar to Toby. Tom Papley has not been at all good this year, and it's just like, oh, yeah, because everyone else is everyone playing else so has well. Up. How's yeah. his punting going, though? Don't know. Don't pay attention to that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I want. Get him on hold all tickets. Uh, yeah. Stats guy, you want to talk about Callan Ward? Yeah, you wrote another article, uh, Lockie, about yeah Callan Ward ahead of his 300th, which was which was awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. Is he the greatest Giants player of all time? There's a, a lot of people might say, I don't know, Phil Davis, you've got Cornelio, you've obviously got Toby Green, I think would be most people's number one, but would you put Callan Ward right up there on number one? I, I would, um, just because of what impact he had in – almost things off the field. Like while we know he's this courageous guy on the field, it's why they called him Cement Head. He, he never shirked any sort of tackle or anything when he was playing. But um, the fact is, like talking to a lot of people, the fact he signed long-term deals, was happy to stay at the club, encouraged other players to stay at the club, other high draft picks from interstate wanting to stay at the Giants because Wardy was kind of leading that culture. And I think that's a really intangible thing that yep. it, it's going to be a part of his legacy that not only has he played now 240 games for the club and brought up his 300th. But he's created this culture of, while it hasn't always been success around the Giants, that it's always been pushing towards that and pushing in the right direction. And, and it's like you hope he's the sort of guy who, who gets that sort of premiership glory by the end of the year because of what he's been able to achieve with the club. But, okay. uh, yeah, he's just it, – it's fantastic to see that he's still playing really good footy. I think there was a period a couple of years ago where he dropped off and once Adam Kingsley came in, it kind of helped Wardy as well. He, he, he found some of his best form. So – yeah, it's been great to see Wardy celebrated over the last week or so, and a lot of um, his teammates seem to think, yeah, he's the number one giant for sure. Yeah, right. Well deserved. Nice. Yeah. I'll pay that. Yeah. And then, of course, look, we've got a bit of chatter about the uh, the schedule release in today's show. You mean Alex, we yelled about it? Yeah, Alex is going to yell about yelling. it. Yeah, yeah. Lots, lots of yelling. No Thursdays overlap. But GWS have seemingly asked for no Friday nights. Yeah. Is that because they've had that success in that twilight slot that they seem to love on a Saturday afternoon? Because I re- I see that the Swans Giants game in about six weeks is four thirty on a Saturday over, which for me feels like it should be prime time. It's good for but crowds. That's now prime time. Yeah. yeah, it's good for crowds. You know, that's oh, I love the yeah. slot by the yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the Giants, um, like in all their numbers and all their research, that 4.30 slot at home out at um, NG Stadium, that, that's their preferred time slot. Um, that's when they feel they're, they're able to draw the best crowds. It, it makes it easier for, for families to, to get to and from Olympic Park. So that's always been their preference. And I think, for example, the, the Saturday night game they're going to have against Carlton um, a, a few weeks after that Swans game will be really interesting to see what impact a 7.30 game has there. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that that Saturday Arbo spot is their number one and that's why they're, they're happy to kind of forego the Friday night um, free-to-air broadcast if they know they can kind of get more uh, more people through the gates. You get yeah, right. the train to the Concord West train station, <laughs> yeah, you, know you go across that. the road, have a couple of tins there, and then you do the 15-minute walk to NG Stadium. All right, nice. settle down there, Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> you used to live there. <laughs> anyway, uh, right, before we let you go, Lucky, look, this is a big, big, big thing, obviously, on the AFL Today show, is listening to Alex whinge and moan about Sydney and no coverage. How do we fix it? How yeah. do we fix getting enough shine on the Swans, Lockie? What do we do? They're top of the ladder. GWS in the eight. They're awesome. What are we going to do here? <laughs> Well, selfishly, you can just read my content. I'm more than happy if that's the the main answer that we need. Uh, but I think just Swans have always got a loyal fan base. Giants is a growing fan base. We know that. So I think it's clear that there's an appetite for content there. I, I think they, they clearly want deeper analysis, not just um, talk like you mentioned, whether it's about um, – 
injuries, whether it's about form, they, they want to go in depth on, on why, for example, the Swans are playing well, which is looking at midfield numbers, rotations and things like that. So I think just catering to that and, and finding ways to, to really connect with the fan bases up here, which I think is slowly working. Yeah, I think what we really need to find out is about that kid thing. <laughs> That's the GWS. Top of the list. Get to the bottom Top of that. Top of the damn list. <laughs> Detective Jim. I mean, uh, <laughs> Detective Jim, I'll put on one of those hats. Sherlock Holmes would be awesome. Anyway, he's been Lockie McCurdy. Thanks for jumping on the AFL Today show, mate. Too easy. Thanks, guys. And make sure we get a red and white scuff uh, for the table next Not time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Alex's going to bring it in. I'll though. bring it in. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Big thank you to Lockie McCurdy. How good was that chat? I mean, Alex is yeah. literally giddy. Yeah. He's shaking us. Yeah. Yeah. That was the most fun I've ever had. It was great. Some Swans chat. Shout out to all the new Swans fans that have followed us on social media and subscribed. It's like if you were just hanging out with Taylor Adams. You'd be laughing. <laughs> <laughs> good job, mate. That was, all right. That big was calls. Yeah. Big, big. Big call. Yours is ridiculous. All right, one big call each for this weekend. Everyone takes Sydney seriously this weekend after they beat the hell out of my beloved Carlton Blues by 10-plus goals on Friday. And Are you all right? Swans, <laughs> I see what he's doing here. I see what he's doing. Reverse mock. The Swans go unbeaten the rest of the season. I know what he's doing. This is a reverse mock. This is like how he's the greatest Essendon fan of all time <laughs> no, in not, Collingwood. I'm just giving credit where credit is due, Alex. It's very simple. <laughs> Sydney are very clearly the best team in the AFL this season and after they absolutely beat seven hells out of my beloved Carlton this week because we don't have any players left, basically, uh, Sydney will then just rampage through the rest of the competition, goals a lot. finish on top, and probably just romp it through to the grand final and win it. This could be the greatest <laughs> will, year of my go, life. We'll be, we be having just like the stupidest discussions. This might be the big call. The stupidest discussions by about round 20 where it's like, Sydney should get a home grand final. That'll be Alex. I know, like, no, no, I'm, no, I'm MCG grand final right, every good, year. Good but year. they're the same dimensions, Alex. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> the 60,000 people more. <laughs> 50. <laughs> or 50, whatever. See, this just the buttons. <laughs> sandwich, uh, so sandwich bet? The, I'm going for the swans. Yeah. Are you, you going for Carlton? No. Well, give me a sandwich. No. <laughs> you still owe me a sandwich <laughs> from last year. I still owe you two sandwiches. No, what? You bought me one. Uh, Jim's going to be a Sydney when you give me a sandwich. Carlton when you give me a sandwich. <laughs> no, look, I can't wait for the Sydney Essendon Grand Final. Like, it's going to oh, be awesome. God, it's going to be absolutely not. amazing. Oh, I couldn't disgusting. handle it if Essendon made the Grand Final. If Essendon made a final, that's just yeah. that's horrible. This city they're might not going to win just down. one. They're going to win three. Because they're, they're <laughs> right what? They're going to be fifth and win. Fifth win all the way through. Oh, what is going on? All right, Alex, you're a big call for this week. I just had a look at the price of this. Melbourne Demons to beat the West Coast Eagles by 10 goals. Currently five. Bucks. I was like, okay, that's a big enough that's call. A 10 goals, the line's yeah. only five goals, so I'm, I'm saying they're going to double it. West Coast looked very slow against Collingwood, and it's just like, oh, this. It wasn't Marvel. Yeah, but they it could, against they, Collingwood. But they yeah. may have hit the hill where they've got a couple of injuries at the moment, and it's just like, oh, this. No, might, yo. No, yeah, exactly. And it just it might come a bit too soon for them. It's like all right, six weeks of pain is coming before a few blokes come back in in the back half of the season. Oh, fair enough. Interesting. Uh, stats boy. Uh, your favourite player, Jed Walter. He's going to get the rising star this week. What's I his reckon. full name, stats guy? Uh, well, I forgot what it was. What was it? Did you forget it already? I've forgotten it. Yeah. What are you talking about? James Clements' favourite player in the AFL, Jed Walter. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. no, <laughs> sorry. Non-chance. I thought he said that once. I thought yeah. it was so easy. I'm yeah. like, no. I'm pretty sure his full name I, was James, uh, Jed, no. my favourite player in the AFL, Walter. Non-Carlton division. I thought he had another nickname. I couldn't no. think of it. Yeah. I love Jed Walter. Like, you, I think your, what's your big call here? I just think he's going to get the rising star kick. Two goals, four big last Big call, week. he's going to win the brown low. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jed Walter. I, I'd be happy Come on the show, Jed. You're my favourite player, non-Carlton division. If he beats, if they beat Geelong and he gets the rising then he could get a bit of low vote, which when. would be very handy. Uh, or when, yeah, they're coming up with the tips. But yeah, he kicked two goals for last week. I think he'll be used to the greasy conditions now. He knows the ball drop will come keyword, up a bit better. Keyword, greasy. Yeah. Greasy, yeah, it'll be very greasy and he, he loves it. So I think so he's going to get rising greasy. star this week. If I don't see a lot of sweat bands on Thursday night, I'm disappointed. Yeah. The only thing that Aaron Norton's ever gotten right. He has a cool cool head then. Yeah. And cool hair. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Good one. I like that one. Jed yeah, Walter. I knew any, you would like that Any one. Jed Walter content. That's the first thing for. I've put in about Jed Walter. Let's do it. All right. Thursday night. Thursday night footy. <laughs> for four more weeks. Thursday oh, night footy. Give that? it. Man, give me more. <laughs> what are you doing, Andrew Gillen? Dylan? Jeez. A, you can't afford a haircut. B, you can't get Thursday night footy all year. What are you doing? <laughs> Gold Coast Geelong. T-I-O. 7.30 p.m. on uh, Thursday. What's the Darwin. line here, Stats Boy? Uh, I actually have, I actually have sure. it right now in front of You've me. It, it yeah. is four and a half yes, that's in favour of Geelong. Geelong are the slight favourites, yeah. And the over-under, what do you think that one would be for that, Mark? It'll be 150s because of Darwin? 161 and a half. Ooh, okay. Overs. The last five, I think, they have gone over or four. So which is very surprising in Darwin. So this is a fascinating one, right? Because you've got Gold Coast who have had a very up-and-down season. Mm. Geelong, who were very, very good and then very, very bad. 
Uh, they lost two by a goal. Yeah, I was about to say they've lost the combined they didn't look good. They games didn't look by good. less they than two kicks. No, they didn't look good. Uh, to, I, anytime Geelong lose at Taxpayer Park, I'm just worried, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, oh, that's not good. They've lost a lot there last Other than years. beating Carlton, you have a look at who they've beaten. Yeah, it's, it's not great. It's not a murderer's row. Yeah, it's the same as Carlton. Uh, anyway, <laughs> point being, Gold Coast are very good in the NT. We'll yes, see you yeah. in the NT. So what do you reckon, yeah. Stats Boy? I like that. Uh, yeah, Gold Coast won the last five straight in Darwin, and Geelong have never actually played up there. So the greasy conditions might affect that. It might affect our greasy tips. one more time. I just, I just love saying that. That's yeah. pretty funny. And yeah. then uh, they might get the dish soap out. Didn't help North. North, uh, us at Carson got the dish soap out with the footies last week. Didn't help us at all. Nothing will help by North 70. Melbourne. But maybe think, we would have lost think, by 100. I don't, I don't think know. anything Clarko does is helping. No, it's probably not. But maybe uh, it will help to You're not helping! So well, I'm trying. <laughs> uh, what I think, like all time, Gold Coast and five and two as well at TIA. Uh, Which is I think they've played a few more than that. that. I think it's more than that. Is yeah. it? Might but, be in recent memory. No, they've, yeah. they actually also, started off yeah. their career there not very well in Darwin because they played at another stadium as well. But at TAO specifically, you're right. I think yeah. they're out very good there. Jack, I need to play every game in Darwin to win a Brownlow medal. Lacocious, yeah, yeah, he loves it, loves it up he, there. He loves. Six goals this week. Yeah. <laughs> no Hawkins, no Cameron. Yeah. Uh, Which. Aren't massive outs in these conditions? I don't think. Well, so uh, hold on, no, no, Jeremy Cameron. I, I don't see. I don't see him dominating in, in the uh, slippery is, conditions. Hawkins isn't a big out given his no. output the last month, but I Jeremy Cameron, is a massive. He still out is, but what? I think Jeremy yeah. Cameron is like the most valuable player in the AFL. Like the that's something we didn't actually really hit on in the uh, news ticker as well. Is like we kind of hit it on Sunday, right? Like yeah. The idea that he hit the ground was out. And then they did the uh, weird dinky, ah, oh, he seems fine. Yeah, the AFL ticked test. off on it. Yeah, I think I said that on Sunday, how yeah. I think our concussion test, where that 15-minute where that one where you have to come off and actually do it, yep. should be the first thing you do yep. rather than the second. But anyway. isn't there a first one you do which you're meant to come off to do, but because it's the last three minutes of the game, just like, go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he sounds normal. Just think about the cows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tips, margins, this game is psycho. Gold Coast, look, they feel like they should be favoured. But they're not. They're not. They're it's out. weird. Just so like on, out. Gonna go, on the tipping side, it's like eighty-five percent of tipped Geelong. Mm. That's weird. Yeah, that is weird. Kind of like Gold Coast. I like that midfield. Yeah. I'm going to go the Suns. Ooh, uh, they're five and four versus seven and two Geelong. They win at home. They they're, win at home. Yep. They won the last time these two teams played. It was that people's year. first in, yeah. in Gold Coast, but still that was a home. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go. Let's say the Suns by thirteen. Ooh. Yeah. I'm Gold Coast by four goals. They. I just go Gold Coast at home. I'm just going to. Tip them nine times out of ten. Second time, think about it, and then probably still tip them anyway. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried. I'm, I'm still uh, chopping and changing, but I'll go Gold Coast as well, just because at Darwin, if this was at uh, People's First, I'd probably tip Geelong. I think in the greasy conditions, Stengel will step up, and he has to. because Can the we have a greasy have ticker, Gerald, please? Yeah, I, why, have I, why do I keep saying that? Well, that's just what the conditions are. Big Ollie, big Ollie Henry game, big Tyson Stengel Ollie game. Ollie Dempsey might have to step up as well. I don't see Ollie Henry dominating in these conditions, so I'm going to go Gold Coast by ten. You're big on the conditions, aren't you? Well, it's just a big factor in Darwin. Oh, I just don't know what to do. It is, but it's like the <laughs> Gold Coast. Voice the is o- I don't know why. The Gold Coast players like, obviously like. used to the humidity and the conditions yeah. that they do got that they more than likely get it down compared to Geelong. Geelong have never played three. in yeah. not much humidity there, in Geelong. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, just a couple of breezes, cold, yeah. some cows. Gold Coast though, that midfield. So took Noah Anderson, Rowell. Matty Rowell. Mm-hmm. You expect a big bounce back game for Rowell. He's had a couple of rough weeks. Uh, Lukosius, big game. It's just Darwin. He does Flanders, it. I don't Flanders know, has been awesome. He's like, been consistent. Just kind of like the Suns. I just think they're neat. All yeah. right. Super coach tips, vibes, thoughts on a bit of a Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday trades are always fun. I've already got the double trade uh, locked <laughs> oh, and loaded because yeah. I got a double upgrade because of last Ooh. year. Last week's Jordan sweep debacle. Uh, the big question remains for me, though Isaac Rinkeen or James Orko? We just had this discussion in the office. I don't want to do the Zorko thing. Twice bitten, three times shy. <laughs> just fool me twice, fool me three oh, right. times, full on me because I'm an idiot. But I just don't want to do the Zorko thing. Like, despite how good his like run home for oh, over the next five weeks is, yeah. Rankin's been awesome. I've used my final boost. <laughs> Here's my final boost. one. Uh, Roberts, Cadman, and Reed out. I've bought Nick Martin back in. I've just bitten the bullet. I've copped that. <laughs> Lockie Sullivan in and Rankin in. I nice. think you guys are selling Zorko short. I think he has a. Definitely, I have a no flog list. He in my literally team. is playing the halfback role, which there's no one else in that Brisbane team that's going to play. Rankin will randomly play three quarters in the forward line and then one quarter midfield. He had ten Zork- centre bounces last week. Rankin. Yeah, and that's I, been I think he'll average hundred, but I think Zorko's going to average more. He's only I think 
Uh, Dan in the office who's all over it was discussing 40k more. I'd be taking Zorko. Rank, I'm getting Zorko in this week. I reckon over Rankin it. has 10 to 15 center bounces a week, and that's no, but that'll change. Average. One week you'll have six or seven nah, rather than 10 nah, or 15. But I reckon but you know what you get with Zorko so as well? many, He's 35 year old hammies. Yeah. And he's 35 year old calves. He looks fine though. Yeah. Just, I, I don't do like it. him as a as a bloke, so Just that's that's why it. I didn't really want to put him in. But my yeah, big no, question is like bringing Whitfield in the back line. No, uh, no, they've whether everyone's not, figured it out. Exactly. Whether or not he's a big beneficiary of see, I nailed it. Uh, <laughs> of actually, so they lose Lucky Ash as well yeah. down back. They lose in the middle Josh Kelly. You'll have to get a bit more now, of the ball. Yeah. There's a little bit but more ball for Whitfield. But it's just you go you go and shut Whitfield down. You send your tagger straight to him now because like he is the outlet. Interesting. Oh, I also just don't want too many GWS dudes in my team. Yeah. I'd have like about eight of them. At this I've point. got – That's not good for the buyers. I've literally got Tom Green and Jones. All right. Any other thoughts? No. No. Any, oh, yeah, yeah. Making any trades this week, Stats Boy? What are you doing? Oh, I said I'm going to bring in Zorko. I'm just quickly look at my team. I'm going to I'm going to get rid of Harley Reid. He's, his break even now is 134. Yeah, he's never no, going to get. Him. He could get a random you hundred because you don't exactly. want him on your Ruse team. You don't want him on your Super Coach team. <laughs> I would I would love Jeez. to keep him in Super Coach, but his break even is too high now. So right. got to get rid of him, man. Mm. What is he at priced at? Four, over 440. So laughing. All right, very quickly, yeah. Sir Doug Nichols round. Uh, favorite Indigenous Torres Strait players. Ooh, a long storied history in the AFL. I yeah. love this because I was just like, I just want to just throw names. Yeah, that's I'm what like, we do. I did have top five. I'm like, I don't want to rank them. Yeah, I just ah. want to say, I'm like, I just want to say Cyril. I just want to say Eddie. <laughs> Cyril. Yeah. I like, but one of my favorite aspects of uh, with. Cyril, Cyril. Oh, I was so trying to be like special. Bruce. Yeah. So Cyril. Special. Hey, delicious. Do not speak special, bad special, words special. about Bruce McAvaney. Oh, delicious, delicious, delicious. delicious. Uh, there was a moment where Carlton had the mosquito fleet of like Eddie Betts, Jeff Garlett. And yep. uh, Chris Yaron, yeah, Chris Yaron. It was fan- It worked was- for like half a season around yeah. Fev, and it was unreal. I just yeah. remember sitting there with the old man, just going, "This is bloody good. <laughs> <laughs> How good is this?" <laughs> like Fev would just knock it to ground, and somebody would get it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love that vibe. Uh, Sean and Peter Burgoyne, yeah, Gavin Wanganee, one of my most hated oh, AFL players because medalist. of yeah, the yeah. Uh, 1993 Grand Final. Mm. Also, Amy Bombers beat my beloved uh, Boos. Chase mm. Burgoyne now running around for Port. Yeah, love the that. Burgoyne's everywhere. Obviously, Adam Goods. I met Legend. him, in, met him in New York. Did you? Yeah. Nice. That's random. Took a photo. Oh. He Mickey. was not happy. Oh. I think he's still yeah. underrated as like a player of all time. He won time. two brown no, like, no, but people don't talk about him. And he, he literally could yeah. play every single position. He was, yeah. he was Yeah, major. Rock, Rover, Ford. Yeah. Uh, Mickey Major. O, Mickey O, Lachlan. Mickey yeah. O, one of the great forwards for the Swans in the late 90s, early 2000s. Mickey Winmar. Yeah. Byron oh, Pickett. Don't Byron Pickett's my favourite of all, all time. The Cracker North. Brothers. It was awesome. Cracker it's... Brothers as well. Kickets. I'm a big Derek Kickett. Big Derek Kickett guy. Anyone with the surname Rioli? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Literally any of them. Uh, there was one. Oh, this is absolutely killing me. Who played for Richmond? Uh, not Daniel. Prior to that. Long time ago. I'm not sure. Anyway, I can't remember. I'm big my Richmond <laughs> history. <laughs> Byron Pickett's a good one too. Uh, yeah, he was a sniper, but I loved him. Oh, I, big hits. Yeah. Big hits. Absolutely. Graham Johncock. Sean McAdam. Oh, great one. We're just saying names. Yeah, yeah this is great. He's great. But Eddie Troy Betts, Cook. Like, Troy Makebase. <laughs> nice. Barracking Mal Michael. Uh, <laughs> barracking for Eddie Betts was like one of the greatest moments oh, ever. Like, he was just so Everyone fantastic. loved it. Exci- one of the most Eddie's exciting story. players of all time. Yeah. Like it's actually kind of like when he went to Adelaide, you're kind of like, it sucks, but at least another fan base gets to appreciate it. And then he owns that pocket. Rankin's trying it. to say it's his, but and that it's was, definitely That it was a cool thing being a Swans fan with Bud. Like obviously a lot of people here in Melbourne, Hawks fans loved him. And, it, and a lot of people just love watching him play, but he catapulted the Swans into a new stratosphere of fandom. It's like, buddy. Buddy. The buddy. Goat, like, the win, just winning games off his own boot. Mm, like, honestly. Uh, either way, we'll have more of that across the uh, entire Sir Doug Nichols round. Because when have we got Essen and Richmond? Next weekend. Next weekend. Next Saturday. Saturday. Yep. yep. Dream time yeah. of the I'm G. Gone dream time time the Someone week. has told me this. I've never been to a dream time. That the, lead, awesome, that yeah. the lead up to that game, like the 15 minutes before, awesome. is on par with Anzac Day Eve and Anzac Day. It is. Yeah, yeah. Nice one. All right, that'll do it for AFL Today for today. We'll be back with AFL Today tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to thank, obviously, our guest, Lockie McCurdy, for jumping on. Mm. And thanks to Alex over there for just absolutely <laughs> nothing out about the Swans. For yeah. Basically all show. At least there's one media outlet that'll talk about them. Us. Us. Yep. Yeah. There you go. And the Stats Boy, thank you for just being here. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm, I'm always here. Existing. <laughs> I'm always here, Jim. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, remember to smash a like across all the socials uh, for the AFL Today Show, but of course, the uh, Cricket Today Show, the Football Today Show, the NBA Australia Show, the NFL Australia Show, and of course, the Hold All Ticket Show. Yep. There's a lot of shows there. Just check out punters. There's been a lot of stuff go up this week for the group ones in Brisbane. A lot of GG Ooh. action. Love it. Subscribe, star, and like all of those shows across your podcast apps. Check them all out on YouTube and gear like that. 
get around him. I don't know, like Gavin Wengeny getting around a Brownlow that he somehow stole in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, he was a guy. He was Broke a guy. my heart, but he thought he was good. I still hate that 93 Bombers. Day. The baby Bombers. <laughs> All right, anyway, we'll catch you later this week. In fact, we'll be back for the Teams Thursday show tomorrow. This has been AFL Today. Remember, look after yourselves. And we'll be back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.